What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome back to another transfer update show. Jao Felix is a Chelsea player. I, I did not expect to be saying this a couple of days ago, but hey, Jao Felix wants to come down to the trenches. He's here in London. He's undergoing his medical and as this video sh is coming out, he should already be a Chelsea player. But as we're recording, he is undergoing his medical um, at Cobham, I think, or somewhere in London. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that he is in London. He's signing the documents and he's going to be a Chelsea player. What does it mean for us in the long term? God knows. What does it mean for us in the short term? God knows. But we might have a creative outlet in the squad. We might have someone in our front three who actually has a clue, who actually has working brain cells. But we're going to delve into everything regarding the Jao Felix transfer. We're going to go through all the other major talking points from today as well. We're going to be talking about Marcus Turam, Pedro Porro, and Mason Mount contract talks because that is rear this ugly head again. So before we get into this, as always, big up everyone that's locked in. Like, subscribe, all of that on your way into the stream. Check out Jersey's FC for all your best affordable football kits at 20% off if you use the code CarefreeLewisG at checkout. So you guys already know what to do. Head over there, get your favourite football kit, club or country. They do do name print as well, so to keep an eye out for that. And yeah, let's get into this. Jao Felix got given the here we go earlier today by Fabrizio Romano. Full verbal agreement reached. Loan move on 11 million euro fee with 100% of the salary covered by Chelsea. Before leaving, Felix has extended his contract with Atletico Madrid until 2027. And he has already flown to London to undergo his medical tests and to sign the contract. Fabrizio has also said Chelsea have a very good relationship with Atletico. So even though this could be expensive... This will be no problem if Chelsea want to buy Jao Felix after the loan. This move also doesn't infect Nkuku as that has already been completed. That is already a done deal. We just haven't really announced it, but everything's been signed. All the documents have been signed and that is done. Now, I want to try hype you guys up as much as possible for this signing because we haven't really had a lot to celebrate this season. It's just been miserable, depressing. It's been all sorts of crap, but... I, I don't know how much I could, how much work I can do with this one because the only good thing about this transfer to me is that this is direct competition for Havertz. So this might either light a fire up his ass or it might confirm that he's just not good enough and we need to get rid. To me, I don't want to see the two play together. They're way too similar. They'll, uh, they'll, they will play in the same spaces and it just will not work out at all. But I'd like to see them play against each other. Play Felix in Mount in Habits' position. Um, he's better creatively from what I've heard. From what I've seen, he has a much better finishing technique and a much better range of finishing with his feet than Habits does. So there might be some areas for him to succeed in. I don't know how he'll adapt to the physicality of the league. He doesn't really look like the muscly sort of player that would be able to deal well in 50-50s. But it's also about the technical ability with him. Where, what's the decision making going to be like? How good are you with your 1v1s? How good are you in terms of composure when you're in the right position to finish? And I do believe he has those aspects of his game at a much higher level than a Havertz does. It's just how will he be able to translate it? And how will he be able to translate it into this team as well? Because this team is just absolutely atrocious and we still haven't really addressed the midfield issue yet. So I don't know how Felix is going to do, but... There isn't really a lot of pressure on the player. There's not really a lot of pressure on the club for this to work. This is a very low risk sort of move. If it doesn't work, he's just going straight back to Atletico Madrid. If it does work, we should be all in for keeping Jao Felix. We should just be sending Havertz the other way in that instance. But fingers crossed he does well. I'm not really too annoyed about the no buy option because... Like, we kind of already knew that for the last day or two. I would rather have an op um, option to buy or something like that. But I think it also adds more pressure to the player. I think now this is relatively risk-free. It's just something optimistic. Because we have had so much crap to watch this season. To sit there and, like, we've got a new player coming in across the door. And 
that gives me something to look forward to. He might be a ray of light in the shit show that has been this season. He also might not. He might be absolutely terrible. He might abs he might struggle with a terrible midfield behind him, with awful creators around him. Or if we use him in the right way, he might be the creative outlet that we have been struggling for. I think I've been saying a lot about Havertz. He could potentially be replacing Mount too. I just don't know if he'd be able to play that deep. I just don't really want to see him on the wing because everything I've seen, everything I've researched about the player says that him on the wing doesn't work. But Jao Felix is a Chelsea player. Let me know you guys' thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always. We'll move to Marcus Furam because Fabrizio has also added that this will not change the plan for Chelsea to try and get him. It depends on what Borussia Mönchengladbach wants to do. And Chelsea sees this as a very good opportunity. Now, I like Chelsea, I like Marcus Furam. I think he looks like a good centre-forward. He seems to be very clinical as well. Seems to take a lot of the chances that he makes. He's not very wasteful. Link-up play is very good too. Has been rumoured that he has a little bit of tunnel vision, but we might be able to take the aspect of the game out of him. It all depends on the time, but... For me, after Felix, we should really be looking towards just getting in a midfielder. I think we're not focusing on that area at all, and we really need to, because it's the 10th of January already. A third of the window's already gone. The midfielder should have been the first thing we're doing. Um, Turam is also on a free in about six months, so we really don't need to rush this deal. We can focus on other areas if we have to. So, yeah. Marcus Suram to Chelsea, I don't mind, but I'd rather we focus on other areas and then if the opportunity presents itself, go for Marcus Furam. He must already be aware that there is a spot for him at Chelsea if he's just patient, so he shouldn't worry too much. On to Pedro Porro. Um, we're linked with Pedro Porro. You might be hijacking Tottenham this time. Um, Podro, Pero Podro is a very well-rounded right back. I think he is the perfect option for us in terms of value for money. I think he's only got a 40 to 45 million release clause. The only question mark is Jao Felix. Because from what I've heard, Pedro Porro has been doing the nasty with Jao Felix's misses. Because we are already not enough of a car crash for a football club. We are now literally signing two players who are having an extender storyline against each other. I, I don't care. Fuck it. We'll see what happens. It, it might work out. We need right backs in. So if he's the permanent one, it is what it is. Felix is going to have to hold that also. Come on, your girl's cheated on you like three times. I figure it out. But yeah, yeah. Pedro Porro to Chelsea. I'm down for it. I just don't know what it's going to be like behind the scenes. I wish we had an all or nothing, but we move. Mason Mount contract talks. We're going to round up on here because Matt Law has just said the ownership want to keep him and they see him as a future leader. Ugh, that's great. I know there's also been rumours that Mount has demanded 300k a week, but it's not true. And that's fair, but he could have easily been asking for 250k or 200k a week. And those wages, he's still not good enough to be on right now. He probably wants close or the same as Reese James, which is on 250k a week, which he doesn't deserve. Spare me your two-time Premier League, I mean, two-time Player of the Year bollocks because that's a fan vote. And how Silver didn't win it last season is completely beneath me. Mount has been playing like a 100k a week player or less this season. He should not be on those sorts of wages. That would absolutely kill our wage structure and it would ruin our negotiations with any future incoming players because they'll look at Mount and they'll think they deserve better than him. He should not be on those wages, simply put. I don't care if we lose him because he wants those wages. If he does and he's willing to leave because of it, he's not as proper Chelsea as people make it out to be and the future leader stuff is a load of arse. I think the best thing we could do for Mount if Mount really cared about re-signing and proving himself, would be to give him a one or two year contract extension and to give him a pay rise to about 150k a week. Give him the same amount as Havertz. I'm fine with that. But anything more? <coughs> no. Give him a one or two year contract extension so he can actually showcase his ability. And then if he reaches that ceiling that everyone says that he should be at, then he can renegotiate at 200k a week, at 250k a week. And it would be a much better move for all parties. But until then, I am not interested. 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. This has been your 10 minute update. Big up everybody, like, subscribe, and as always, up the Chelsea.